Hey guys, Everything Helpful Pro here, and I'm very excited to make this video. I've been waiting for this for a very long time. So today, Apple did release the latest iOS 8 Goldmaster GM version for the iPhone 5S, 5C, 5, and 4S, as well as the iPod Touches and iPad models. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to get the latest iOS 8 GM version, which should you know, GM is the final release. It's just the pre-release pretty much just for developers. It's exactly the same as the final version. However, sometimes there could be a slight variation in between the models. So, you know, in that case, you will be able to update it from your device in case that happens. But this is the final version and you can install this absolutely for free. There's no difference between this and the final version that'll come out with the iPhone 6. So let's go ahead and get started. So first off, I just want to mention that, you know, this is iOS 8. This is the real deal. And there's a whole bunch of new features. Now, it's not as revolutionary as iOS 7 was to iOS 6. However, there's still a bunch to see. Now, I don't know why, but Apple did not mention iOS 8 at the Apple event today. And I really don't know why, because everyone that currently has an iPhone has been waiting for this event, you know, for the actual iOS 8 release. Unfortunately, Apple did not mention that at all. So... What this video will pretty much offer you is the final version of iOS 8 running on your iOS device today. And you can do it without any account, any registration necessary. The iPhone I'm gonna be doing it on today is on 7.1.1. It doesn't matter if it's on 7.1.1 or 7.1.2. It'll work regardless. And also you do not need any sort of UDID registration or developer account. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and begin. This is a very simple process. It just requires two things, a download, and you know, installing it on your iTunes. So let's go ahead and run through the entire process. Now this video isn't strictly for iPhone, it's for iPads as well. So first off, let's go ahead and make sure our device is plugged in. On the back of it, you'll notice a model number. Mine is A1453 Sprint iPhone 5S. And you wanna go ahead and download an item specific IPSW file. And down below in the description, I'll throw down all the links where you can see you know, your specific device and the iOS 8 GM firmware download. It's really simple, you can download it directly or you can use a torrent, which I recommend, and I'll have links for everything down below. Anyways, so once you do have it, go ahead and drag it to your desktop, and we're gonna go ahead and open up iTunes with your device connected. Now on your keyboard, hold Option if you're on a Mac, or Shift if you're on a Windows, and left click the Update button. Now you absolutely wanna make sure it's the Update button. If you select Restore, you might not get the same result. However, personally, if I restore or update, it doesn't make a difference. Now, if you update, it'll keep all of your data. If you restore, it won't. Now take note, if you want to downgrade back to 7.1.2, your files will no longer be compatible. So you must stick with iOS 8 beyond this point, unless you back it up all manually and then manually put it on. So just make sure you know that iOS 8 is going to be permanent for your backup. You cannot downgrade back to 7.1.2 and keep all your stuff. So at this point, if you haven't gotten an iTunes error, you're golden. If you do get some sort of error, error 11, 13, stuff like that, try it on a different computer. Restart the one you're using, or personally, I just recommend moving over to another computer. And meanwhile, while this is restoring, I just want to run through some of my favorite features in iOS 8, you know, just to fill the time. And in the meantime, you can compare the progress with the iPhone that I am currently updating. Feature wise for me the favorite would be the camera. Apple finally added a timer. I don't know why they wouldn't do that. It's been so long. They also added time-lapse photography and overall it's just a more fluid experience. Now once you do take a picture and you go in to edit it there's a whole host of new editing features and I really really like this. So you know first off there are the filters and you move over here and you have a very extensive way to edit your photos. See all of these? You can go into every single one and manually move it around you know for exposure. I'm just testing it out. It's amazing. You can fine tune your photos just the way you like and without ever needing you know any extensive software. If you just want to post it you can do it quickly from your phone and then post it right there. Now filters will be supporting third party applications. So you'll actually be able to download any sort of filters from the app store and see them here. It's actually really cool. So the photo application and the camera application, big points for Apple there. In settings, a lot of the features have been tweaked. So a lot of things have just been moved around. You'll see a little bit of a different look. Not much has changed, but you know, it is noticeable. Now I like the wallpapers. There's a lot of new wallpapers in iOS 8. Let me just show you some of them. As you can see right here, there is a really cool mountaintop one that I really like. 
you know, the Galaxy. So Apple has been adding wallpapers really slowly, but they did add a lot in iOS 8 and there's a lot of cool looking ones. You know, it's not a big feature. Anyone can get wallpapers, but it's cool to have some really neat ones included in the software itself. So inside of the App Store, Apple has done quite a little bit of work. There's a new middle category called Trends. And in here, you'll be able to see the trending applications, which is pretty cool. And Apple has been bringing up the App Store to standard of, you know, most Android phones. So you'll be able to borrow applications. There'll be app bundles and video previews. Next, the weather application, such a small application, but Apple did add stuff to it, make it better. It now uses a source from the weather channel and it does show a nine day preview of forecast. In the messages, this is actually one of my favorites. In here, Apple has added quite a lot. So quick type is one of them. You'll be able to type and see predictive software up above for some reason, it's not working for me right now. However, it is a very handy feature. And there's also a new feature pretty much just sending little voice memos to people, slide up to send it, slide left to delete it, and also like a Snapchat built-in feature with a camera. You can record videos or pictures, send them to someone, and they'll be deleted within like 30 minute time frame. You can choose to save them, depends on you. Now, as we're finishing up here, I just wanna address one thing. And someone's gonna ask, is this a usable firmware? Now, because it's GM, it's pretty much the final release. It's 98% there. The rest is a small software update, basically a final little bit of tweaks between the final release, but you can consider this pretty much the final release. And yes, this is absolutely a usable firmware. I've already been using it for a while today, and I can say it's way better than any of the betas. You know, nothing's crashing, everything works as it should, and all apps that were working on 7.1.2 are fully compatible with it. I haven't seen any out of the place crashing. Everything's working as it should. So if you're worried about whether or not you should be using this on a day-to-day -day basis, don't. This is absolutely a stable firmware and it absolutely works. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up real quick and show you that I am now running iOS 8 on my iPhone 5S that was previously on 7.1.1. So when will iOS 8 be released? I'm guessing that it'll probably be released with the iPhone 6. So once that drops on September 19th, we'll be seeing an immediate download of iOS 8. It could even be before, so I don't know for sure. In the past, Apple has usually released it the same day or the next day after the keynote. This is the only exception, and I don't know why, so we're gonna have to wait on that. But as you can see, guys, I am now running iOS 8 fully on my iPhone 5S. And every device works with this, the iPads, the iPod Touch 5th generation, and all the iPhones. The only device that no longer has the support for this software is the iPhone 4. It was just getting too slow anyways. So after this update has finished, all of your stuff will still remain on the iPhone. As I said before, the only problem is if you do want to downgrade back to iOS 7 while it's still possible, you're not going to be able to take any of your stuff with you because the libraries are updated to be iOS 8 specific and they will no longer be compatible with iOS 7. So keep that in mind. If you're updating iOS 8 and you're keeping all of your stuff on your device, you cannot go back. Now, if you are already running iOS 8, you can just go into software update and update it there. You don't have to run through all of this, you know, an earlier beta. And one last question to address. So with iOS 8, the GM version, you'll have to go through one more update and you'll be able to see that in your software update settings. And that's when the final release drops. And that's no problem. You know, it'll just take you a few minutes. You'll go ahead and run it. Nothing will be lost. And you'll be finally updated on the newest version of iOS 8 once it does finally drop. Now, as for compatibility, almost every application works perfectly that would work on 7.1.2. I haven't had any issues and soon we'll be seeing, you know, the overhaul of every application. They'll be releasing updates for iOS 8 and, you know, we have like two weeks left. So if you guys want to show off to your friends, you want to get to use iOS 8 before everyone else, this is the perfect opportunity. And I got to say, I absolutely love it. I've been using it for a while, you know, in the beta stage still, and I've had to deal with a lot of crashing, a lot of that kind of stuff. It hasn't been fun, but I got to learn the software a little bit better. And I'm very impressed. Apple pretty much took a software that was already great. You know, iOS 7 changed a lot of things. They took it, refined it, added, you know, Snapchat-like functionality, added a bunch of missing pieces like the timer and the camera application, and it made a very great final product. So I'm very excited for all of you guys to use it. Hopefully this video helped you install it and get familiar with iOS 8 before the final, final release. And lastly, I do want to mention that I will be covering the iPhone 6, the iPhone 6 Plus, the iWatch. I'll make sure to cover everything about the iPhone, compare it to, you know, other iPhones, other phones, give you an idea of whether or not this is a phone you want and answer any questions you may have regarding this product. It's not cheap, I know. So guys, stay tuned for all of that. 
and I will be standing in line for the iPhone 6. I'll keep you guys updated if you're in the area. You know, come stand with me. It would be fun. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you now have iOS 8 running on your device. Have a great day, guys. Peace.